Good morning. If you want to see how we uh, built this fancy bird feeder, stay tuned because that's what we're going to do today. Well, welcome to another Memphis Monday, Memphis Monday 275, the uh, 15th week of our sixth year. Story is, uh, a little over a year ago, Memphis Monday 219, we built a real nice bird feeder. And I really like it. And uh, my wife asked me to build another one so we put in the yard. And so we're going we're gonna to sort of copy it and build another one. Only, we're going to take lessons learned from this one and make a lot of improvements to it. So, let's knock off the chit-chat and get to work. Here's a picture of our bird feeder we made last year. It's made out of marine plywood. It slides up over that post right there. Let me show you some of its cool features. I got it backed up so you can see the uh, good features of this thing. You fill it up through the top here, and you got this little top thing that fits right on there, like that. And we're going to reproduce that. This uh, roof comes off, so you can take that off and clean it. And then the whole rig slides right off of the uh, of the post, so you can move from post to post. Now let's talk about the uh, bad parts about it. Uh, one of the things I don't like is I made it out of uh, three quarter inch plywood, which makes it very heavy, way heavier than it needs to be. The whole thing is three quarter inch marine plywood. It's very heavy. Another thing I used uh, butt joints all the way around. And here I just put this edging on there put it in with screws. I had to make these holes here bigger for the bird feed. And I got hardware under there. Um, even the little top there put in with uh, screws. We're going to fix that too. So here's a little sketch of our uh, bird feeder redo. Um, it's, got, it's got four parts. It's got the feeder roof, the main roof, the center section, and the platform. Feeding platform. Um, the improvements we're going to make is instead of making the top and the bottom here, in two pieces, we're going to make it one piece. Uh, we're also going to use miter joints here instead of butt joints. Uh, we're going to lighten it up using half-inch marine plywood instead of three-quarter. I'm going to paint it with uh, Thompson's water seal. Um, and we're not going to include any screws or other hardware uh, in the construction. Now here's the... Uh, little sketch I made um, of the four pieces. We got the feeder lid, the roof, the feeder platform, and then the one piece of uh, feeder body. And I was going to make this a removable part uh, held by dowels here, but I think I've decided against that. I'm going to permanently attach it, just like it is on the other one. Now, get my joinery all down and 
my measurements for the miter. See, we got miter corners here instead of butt joints. Then I got a block of four by block inside there that will reinforce this uh, square, the miter joints, and also provide a stop. So when I set the bird feeder down on the post, it will uh, stop right there. So the inner dimensions here are three and a half square, but the outer dimensions are four and five eighths. So that setup right there will give me exactly my four and five eighths. Okay, let me cut the other three sides and we'll be on a roll. Now before we do anything else, we need to cut out these triangular feeder holes. So what I've done is I've marked on this one board when I get it done. Uh, we use it as a pattern, but our block will go here and just above the level of the block will be a cleat that the feeding deck will fit on and then the feeding deck will be right there and then right here is the hole the triangular hole we need to cut for the uh, bird seed to come out of uh, remember our moxin vice we uh, built a couple of weeks ago this is the reason i like this remember we built two but i said i like this one better because i can clamp things to it and that's what i'm doing here i'm just going to cut these out with a jigsaw i'm going to gang saw the uh, other three I'm gluing it together with uh, Tight Bond 3 and nailing it. Now what I'm doing now is uh, putting that block in here remember where we marked it putting that in with tight bond three and i'll probably run a screw in behind it later for right now i'm just going to stick it in with uh, stick it in with brads This is the roof. Uh, I'm cutting the. I got to cut a slot down through the top of the roof so it'll slide over the center section. I probably could have cut this slot before I put the roof together, but after thinking about it, I figured this is probably the best way to do it. Well, here's our lid. Now, it's held together here with these uh, blocks in the center and got the hole through the top. Now I got to uh, cut out the feeding tray out of this uh, piece of plywood. I, uh, I originally called this uh, half inch marine plywood, but it's not. It's just uh, half inch exterior plywood.
and then this little <clears throat> tube fits right in there like that Let's turn it over and see what it's going to look like And this roof here, go on here like this. And of course our seed tray needs some kind of a, some edging around it here to keep the seeds from flopping off on the ground. They do anyway, but... Putting these sloping cleats on here so that uh, the lid, I can put the lid right down on it. And then the lid, actually the lid, the roof, slide down there on, on there like that. Here's what we have done so far. So we've got all this part finished. Now we need to make a lid for the feeder tube. And I want that lid to come out far enough that it blocks these uh, joints where this roof slides down. So no water can drip in along the, that uh, joint. So the lid will basically be just a smaller replica of the roof. So let me cut this, cut this out. I haven't mentioned it, but you probably noticed that I put all these angles are 45. That simplifies the construction considerably. Reinforce the lid and as a positioning guide, I'm installing this little block. And since everything's at 45 degrees, Again, that makes everything simple. And our lid fit right up on here like this. I'm finishing it in this uh, light brown Thompson's water seal. This is what I'm using right here. It's called Nut, Nutmeg Brown. It prevents water damage, provides fade and scuff resistant, and it uh, resists UV damage. 
so unless there's uh, somebody comes comes back and says, oh well, you're not supposed to use Thompson's water seal on uh, bird feeders. I think it's going to be a pretty good choice. Especially this dry plywood, it really soaks in. I think it's going to see what it looks like in a year or so, sitting out in the rain and sun. Well, there's our birdhouse for Memphis Monday 275. Um, the center section here is all one piece. It sits on a four by four post. Uh, it's got a little lid here that's removable. The top, uh, the roof here is uh, removable. It's lighter and it's all been uh, painted with uh, Thompson's water seal. So overall, I'm pretty satisfied. Let's see if the birds like it. Well, that'll do it for Memphis Monday 275. Uh, today we we rebuilt, uh, tried to improve a uh, bird feeder design that we originally put together in Memphis Monday 219. We made it lighter. Uh, we covered it in, in uh, Thompson's water seal. We put a bigger roof on it. And I think the feeding tube uh, is also a little bit bigger. But overall, I'm pretty satisfied. Once the Thompson's water seal uh, dries, I'm, I'll actually put it out and see how it works. I uh, wish it was drying out because it's raining. Okay, like, shaver, uh, share, comment, uh, all the stuff you do on the internet. But most important, make sure you're back here next week for another exciting Memphis Monday. Thanks for playing along.